Last week, Liberal Senator Cory Bernardi called for Australia to ban the burqa in public. Senator Bernardi's comments prompted a deluge of debate about the traditional Muslim attire. Today, we're going to get a perspective of a woman who was raised in a Christian household before converting to Islam as a teenager. Please welcome to the circle, Susan Carlin. Thank you. Thank you so much, Susan, for joining us on the circle. Thank you for having me. Maybe if we can hit this news angle first, mm -hmm. um, following Senator Cory Bernardi's comments. I just wanted to um, quote him and get your response to this. He said that the burqa represents the repressive domination of men over women, which has no place in our society. What are your thoughts about that comment? Um, it's, it's problematic, I think, because it, first of all, it assumes that all the women that are wearing um, the burqa or the hijab or the niqab or any other mm -hmm. uh, clothing are doing so solely because the men in their lives are making them. And that's simply not the case. Certainly in some circumstances, in some countries around the world it is. Um, um, but in Australia, I know a number of women that, who choose to cover their face, and often um, one of my friends, for example, does it despite her husband not wanting her to. So it's very much um, their own personal choice. It's something that they feel really good and positive about. And I feel very uneasy about a man who probably has probably not spoken to any woman who covers her face, telling us why she does what she does without having heard their opinion Can at all. Can you explain to me why you would choose to do that? Um, well, uh, look, it's, I obviously can't speak entirely on their behalf, but I just know from the friends who I've spoken to that do it. And you need to know in Australia, very, very few women do it. We're talking, you know, maybe a hundred or so. It's a very small amount. Um, they just see it as being a positive expression of their spirituality. They see it as something that it works for them. It's not for me, but if it works for them, I think they should be allowed to dress how they want to. Mm. It's something that I guess they help. it helps them feel closer to their creator. And if it works for them... You know, I, I don't see it as an issue. Mm. Susan, you're a lecturer in politics at Monash University in Melbourne. Tell us about your journey from Christianity to mm. Islam. Um, well, it's, it's not very interesting, but I was <laughs> raised in... I had a, a, a lovely upbringing with my family. I had a very positive experience with the church, so it certainly wasn't... Um, my conversion certainly wasn't out of a, a horrid rejection of the church or anything like that. I loved going to Sunday school, but it was when I was about 17, I just I started to wonder, why do I believe what I do? Is it because I think it's um, true, or is it just because I've been raised to believe this and so I decided to look into other religions to, or, and no religion to see what made sense to me um, and of, but except for Islam that was the last one on the list because I thought it looked sexist and outdated and barbaric and, and all the standard stereotypes but I found despite myself when I when I would stumble across information about Islam that it actually surprisingly made a lot of sense to me when I stripped away all the politics and propaganda and sensationalism and actually got down to what the religion said about itself. It was um, very beautiful, very peaceful, um, very logical and it just really resonated with me but it wasn't until I was 19 that I decided to become Muslim because I was worried about how my family and friends would react and it was a, a big decision but it got to the stage where I just knew, look, this is what makes sense to me and I can't live my life to make other people happy. This is what feels authentic for me. Mm. And so when I was 19, I, I changed religions. It's funny, Susan, because most people, when they turn their back on their Christianity, they become atheists and smoke <laughs> pot and stuff. But you decided to, to, to pick something else up that's, you yes. know, that's altogether different. Yeah. What do you think of the perception that Islam does try to control the expression of women? Mm. Yeah, I think... That's definitely a very common um, perception and I think because it's something that I hear about so often and ask about so often, my PhD is specifically on that. My PhD is about the way Muslim women fight sexism in their own traditions and communities because the reality is since the advent of Islam, we've had these amazing women who have been um, getting their rights through their religion, using their religion to get the rights that they want, such as the right to divorce and education and autonomy um, from the beginning of time right up until today. But very few people are aware there's this idea that Muslim women need to be rescued from themselves mm. and from their religion, from their culture. And what, it's so sad that it's seen that way because not only is it incorrect, it's, it's quite offensive um, to Muslims, to Muslim women and the community as a whole. Do you think, though, that is because of the, literally, because of the dress? Because if you look at lots of different religions, mm. all based on faith, yeah. um, but the dress is the one point of difference. Why do you think people have such an issue with the dress? It is interesting, isn't it? Because I think if we think of the way a nun traditionally used to dress in a habit, it's actually quite similar to the 
way a lot of Muslim women dress, but when we look at a nun, we see that as a positive, pious, she's very spiritual and good. And yet when we see a Muslim woman dressed like that, people often feel a bit taken aback and, well, she's a fundamentalist and her husband makes her and she wants to change the rules of our country. So I think a lot of it is the, the cultural baggage that we bring to it. And I think if people could just talk to each other and realise, well, hey, actually, you're just like me. And you probably wear it for very similar reasons to the reasons that a nun used to dress that way. Mm. And, and is it for the reason so to educate people and, mm. and, in, and inform people? Is it so that you save the, the beautiful part of a female body just for the family? It, it, to an extent it is. I think ultimately the reason... Every Muslim woman will, woman will say they wear it for different reasons, but ultimately we do it as an act of worship. It's an act of faith to God. Mm -hmm. Like everything else that we do, the way we dress is, is an act of worship. Can I put um, something to you? This yeah. is a Jewish friend of mine who, who is not terribly orthodox, but she follows the dietary rules, which is, you know, no bottom feeders, no shellfish and no pork. Mm -hmm. She says to me that it, it's not a big deal in terms of how she assesses her spirituality, but every single time she sits down to eat, she's reminded that she's Jewish. Mm -hmm. Is it sort of like that, you know, your way of keeping that close and present? Definitely, and I've had women say that to me, this wearing a scarf is like a tangible reminder to them of their connection to God. Other women say, well, I do it as a feminist statement. I like the fact that when I go out, people aren't judging me entirely on how I look and that we live in a society where women's bodies are commodified and they used to sell everything from toothpaste to screwdrivers and they say, I'm trying to challenge that. Um, so there's a lot of different reasons that are in it, but I've never once had a woman say to me, I wear it because my husband makes me. It's far, far more common for a woman to say to me, my husband wishes I wouldn't, my parents wish I won't, I, w I don't wear it at home, and then when I get out, I sneak around the corner and put it on. So this mm. is very much something that these women are choosing for themselves. Thank you so much, Susan, for joining Thank us for on The Circle. Me. Thank very you. informative and interesting chat. Please thank, thank you. Susan Thank you.